This is uh, a Christmas morning spread. Well, please. This is like a nerd charcuterie. Speaking of fair use, where are you guys gonna post this? Although you have a great fair use argument because this is all completely and utterly resonant with not only our show, but like the things that we are, uh, that our show is about. And so in a sense, well, is this for promotion? No, you're not promoting anything. This is your own show, right? Yeah, so you're good. You're promoting good. Nintendo pretty well. Right, but I, the point I'm making is that the way, the way fair use is, so here's a little fair use lesson, okay? So if you're a filmmaker out there and you're trying to learn about fair use, here, here's, here's, here's how it works, okay? So in our show, we make a TV show called Nirvana the Band the Show, and that show is about two characters who are kind of perpetually stuck in the 90s uh, in, terms of their, uh, yep. in terms of their cultural references, specifically North American culture. Like what, what we're surrounded with is basically like you're, yeah, you're stuck in the subconscious of these characters right now. In a traditional movie or TV show, you're not allowed to show licensed or copywritten material without getting approval of the copyright owner. But if you need to show that stuff in order to tell the story that you're telling, and by that I mean if you have a, a strong narrative reason for using the licenses that you're using, then there is a way through fair use that you can use that stuff without informing the copyright holder and without paying anything. And this can extend not only to video game cartridges, but the actual video game content, to actually screening movies, to music that was played in movies and television shows that you're referencing. So we got dossiers, mission files. Okay, first start on stage one, damn. Oh, you're already there. Damn, got the Nintendo power. I'm going. But what you need to have is a very, very strong connection between your plot as in like what the, what the message you're trying to give. And your lawyer. <laughs> well, you need a very strong connection with your lawyer, <laughs> that's for sure. <laughs> but, but so long as the plot and that licensed material are so strongly connected that nothing else would do it, right? So in, in the recent season of the show, Jay and I do a Indiana Jones parody and we use wall to wall John Williams music. The reason that we're able to use all of John Williams' music is because we are couching ourselves inside the world of that movie. That gives us so much license to, to just use everything. Yeah, Only, fair use, it's our, it's our biggest... But that's method. how you do it. Now again, this is not to say, hey, young filmmakers out there... You're yelling. Anyway, this is not to say you can just do it and release it on your own. Um, you do need a lawyer to make a fair use argument for you, but that's part of the fun. And if you're at the stage where you're releasing things professionally, then you should be dealing with lawyers anyway. For us, the relationship we have with our lawyer is, that's paramount, like that is... Let me, let me, let me put it this way though. A lot of people that we talk to, when you, when you tell them this, are other filmmakers, and we're very good with our experience on our show, but other filmmakers will ask, What's going on? And you often launch into, you know, educating them about fair use and how we've been able to dodge the bullet. So for the filmmakers out there, when they get told no, mm. what what's the course of action? Because they want to do something. They have this song they want to do. Say they, they parody a song. They want to use the master of it. Right. And their producer or somebody in authority is saying, you can't do that, guys. Because you can't that's do it. what we run into all the time. I'll say oftentimes, especially in Canada, and this is a, this is, I don't know if this is, I'm not trying to slag our country, I think this is the best country in the world, but I think there is a Canadian attitude in the uh, industry of arts and all media of unbelievable risk aversion. I mean, this is not a secret. Like, we live in an extremely risk averse society, and that risk aversion winds up translating into legal departments and executives at every level of, uh, uh, of control uh, in this country. Um, and it expresses itself in such a way that if you are doing something that is new or is going to create work for a legal team or is going to create work for executives, and by work I just mean they're going to have to do something out of their ordinary routine, you'll meet resistance, right? Because Now is it because they don't know about these loopholes or certain ways of wording legal documents. Well, of course that's a part of it, but you also have to take into consideration that we live in a in a funded arts society, which is to say that our arts are funded by the government or by big media at a certain level and what that 
That's very good for a lot of reasons because it means we have arts funding, which is amazing. I mean, telefilm is, is, makes feature films and, and every single television show that you see getting made is made by a fund that's essentially a government fund. But the right. side effect of that, obviously, is that you don't need to push the boundaries to get work because the work is already funded. Right, which is a kind of an odd anti-competitive thing, which has pros and cons. But what it what it winds up meaning is that if you show up in a studio and are like, okay, we're going to really change things, and I'm going to do this and this and this, and they're all things that have that are going to create problems and stir the pot, and we might get sued. Who knows, guys? But it's going to be great and really fun. Well, good luck with that argument against people who are getting paid whether their show is good or not. So the real secret is educate yourself and implore people to to do great work because at the end of the day, even though it may be harder, it's all in the name of, of the art. Yeah, people want to do good work. It doesn't matter. Like if you're 60 years old and working at this place forever, if somebody comes in and says, hey, we can really move the dial with this, get on board, it's not going to work every single time. But you, you need to be your own promoter with this kind of stuff because if, especially if you're the person trying to enact change, gone are the days of like, you know, the genius artist who is just going to be unbelievably supported on the first run out no matter what when they're trying to do crazy things like that is just so hard to mm. to get behind it's so hard you really need to be the person who is saying no 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 we're going to do it like this and you may come off like a real son of a bitch but hopefully but the work a, bears out perception about how we do our stuff like a lot of people from the outside looking in are saying oh these guys are like pranksters and they're right. they're bratty about what they're doing and look they're trying to get away with this stuff and, and as if we're like into that's why, as being if that's in why we do it you're getting troublemakers yeah no. Oh my God. Sorry. 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 What are you doing? No, here? It's, we're okay. Sorry, we're, sorry. No, no, we'll, we'll we'll Leave it right away. Uh, okay. okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah we will. Well, I don't even remember what we were fighting about. We're, we're sorry. Sorry. Who sorry. Give me a letter. Right. Give me that. No. Give me no, 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 the letter. Me. Give it to me. Give it to me. We're going to get this guy mad, dude. Okay, okay. Okay, okay, okay. We're fine. The whole reason why we end up being in situations that we are is because we're trying to tell a story in a real way. We want to show something happen and we want to see it done real and sometimes if you're going to be completely unapologetic about how to show that, you get together in, in a room with your, with your team and you start thinking about how this idea is going to be executed and when you, when you start thinking about it in a way where it's like, well, if we had, if we were able to do this any way that we wanted to tell this the best way, what would that be? And then you start knocking away at the blocks that are stopping you from doing that and sometimes that means a lot of hidden cameras and pushing against people saying, oh, you're not allowed to do that. Legally, yeah. Yeah, legally. And then we say, well, well, why? Like, maybe it, if, we did, if we did it like this, can we do it legally? Mm -hmm. And they say, well, then you'd have to reshoot. And like, well, we'll reshoot then. And a lot of the times it's like asking for permission later. Like, it's so much easier in filmmaking to get That's forgiveness right. than permission. Permission doesn't exist. You ask any, like a guy who owns a, like a store or the TTC or like try asking one of these people, hey, can we break onto the tracks of the TTC for our show? Like, you just can't. Okay, are you coming or no? I... Sorry, don't tell okay, anybody. Okay, 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 okay. Come on, come on, Jerry. Jerry, come on. Okay, don't get electrocuted. Just be careful of the third rail. Go, you know what boils go, down go, to this go, is a run. big idea. You're trying to do something that hasn't been done before, right? No matter what it is that you're doing, you don't want to do things that have been done a million times. And in order to do things that have never been done before, people are going to say, well, we've never done that. I know this is an unbelievably stupid point that I'm making, but that is the resistance you're going to, you're going to face with your creative collaborators as well. Right? Because th that's another big important piece of this is that you want to be doing things that is putting all of you, your entire team, in new territory where you're not totally comfortable. You need to be on the edge, not all the time, but you need to be on the edge sometimes if you're really going to do something new. Because in the comfortable places where you're feeling like you know absolutely every single angle, you, you, maybe there's something there, but you're, you're not going to discover that new magic thing. Like you're not... You want to exist right at the edge of chaos. Like, that's where the really crazy stuff is going to happen. No, what's happening? You lift, you lift the thing, you lift. What? I think the pole is on fire. Man. The pole. It's on fire. Oh, oh So you may hear this and just think, oh, so this just means go out, do whatever you want, and just be crazy. Jay and I and our team are so rules oriented. We love rules. We love restrictions. We love constraints. We try to make a show for Cre as long. You're talking about creatively. But even. 
even like the idea of, oh, I, we can bring up the TTC as an example, right? Yeah. You, can't, you can't jump onto the tracks on the TTC and film something. You just can't, right? It's illegal, all these things. Because it's illegal, that means nobody's done it. And that means when we do it, people will go, what? That's illegal. He's probably not doing anything right now. I am doing something. He's probably doing nothing. I'm creating a, an experiment. Watch the third rail. Yeah, I'm watching it. Do you guys know that in Toronto, 300 people a year get electrocuted by the third rail? That's not true. They sweep it under the rug. So we make our show walled off from all of our executives, and they're happy about that. We shoot our entire show in-house. We control everything, and what happens is we have a great relationship with our executives, and they understand what we're doing, <coughs> and all that comes out of our little bubble is just the finished show. So we just hand them the show when it's done. Now, granted, to get there, we needed to have shown that we could do this in the past, but independent filmmaking is a great place to do that because... Proof of concept it, is a great way to... It's nothing, nothing stops it. Like, yeah. if, you're, if you're a filmmaker who has done this stuff before, then people are willing to trust you. And the second part of the recipe is we keep our costs unbelievably low, and that helps. Um, because it's not like they're taking a huge risk to make a, 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 an episode of our show. Um, and we've established trust by having done, like I'd made two films before this with the exact same process, and we made a web series with the exact same process. So if you're a young person out there thinking, oh, I want to be working, this, the, the hard truth is that you just need to do it yourself. Like you need to be out there doing whatever it is that you want to do, because technology is so cheap that you can. You can go out and just make something, and then you use that to prove, oh, I have something here, I have a voice, I have something, so, so trust so me. Mike Myers said, he said, I, I, I stopped waiting for a job and I hired myself. Beautiful. Hey, did we ever have a good time? Are you kidding? Thank you so much for having us. We get to keep all this, right? <laughs>